Hello and welcome to our podcast on joy of teaching international students. I'm Dr. Nazrin Sultana, a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College and I'm the host of this podcast. In this podcast, we share our teaching journey and wisdom about teaching international students in the college classrooms. Today, my guest is Shelly Clifford, a full-time faculty at the college. And Shelly will share her joy and learning from teaching international students. I'm super excited for this conversation. And Shelly, welcome. Thank you, Nazreen. Great to be here. I haven't seen you for such a long time. It's fabulous I, to see you in person. But do you remember this is our first in-person meeting? <laughs> you always meet on Zoom, so I'm super True. excited. I know, but you don't have that box around your face, so now I get to see all of you. Same here. So, we'll start your teaching journey. So, how did it start? It? Actually, it started uh, on a soccer field. I, uh -huh. um, my, one of my sons was playing soccer. Well, they both play soccer, but one of the sons was playing soccer and a Conestoga faculty member approached me and said, Hey, you know, we need some people to teach marketing. Are you interested? And he was at the Conestoga college in uh, the Waterloo campus uh -huh. in construction. And I said, yeah, that might be interesting. I've always thought about teaching. So that's how my part-time journey began. And then from there, I ended up getting a, a variety of courses at the Dune campus and under various chairs, and it just kind of blossomed. And I really found my groove. I enjoy teaching and melting those young minds into, <laughs> into people who want to have these incredible jobs and go into the workforce. So it was, uh, it was a really fun experience. And then I ended up uh, having the ability to uh, become full time here. And now I'm at the downtown Kitchener campus, which is an amazing brand new campus. And uh, I'm actually the coordinator for the Strategic Global Business Management Program. And as you know, yeah, it's a two year grad cert program, all international students. It is an incredibly very large program. We have three intakes, two campuses. We're at the Brantford campus and of course at downtown Kitchener. So uh, it's tons of work but incredibly rewarding and just a, a great a group of people that I get to work with every day. I know, Shelly, I bought you one thing. If I have to use one word, how passionate you are about <laughs> teaching. Uh, it's always fun and, you know, joyous to talk to you. Oh, thank so you. So I'm kind of rolling you back to uh, your past. Uh, so when, when is the first time that you started teaching international student? And what was some of those, you know, aha moment or maybe a story? that was surprised that I did not expect this. Well, to be honest, it, I have those aha moments uh, ongoing, right? Okay. But back in, um, when I first started teaching students, I think it was actually in the GBM program. And uh, at the time we had students from Nigeria and Korea and um, of course, India and Philippines, and they were always mixed in with our domestic students as well. But what I came to realize is when you say certain words mm -hmm. or you give certain examples, and it could be just the keg. We mm -hmm. all know the keg. We yep. go, it's, a, it's a lovely steakhouse. Um, and their escargots are amazing. But if you say the keg, they don't understand the keg. And so True. then you kind of go, oh, okay. So I realized really early on that when I use examples in class, and I love to use examples in class, I, uh, I'm a visual learner, so I believe sometimes people are also visual learners. And so a little bit, um, if you can kind of give them different things to think about or examples or uh, a story, they'll be more engaged with you. So from then on, I always said, hey, does anybody know what this is? Okay, let me explain it. And, or I have photos or I have pictures. And even to this day, I will bring in, people laugh because I have this bag and it's my prop bag. <laughs> So I constantly show, uh, we were doing a licensing um, uh, activity the other day and I brought out all licensing products. So there were jerseys and there were Star Wars ornaments. If you know me, I'm a geek. So I have Star Wars ornaments. I have a Death Star on the top of my tree. I didn't bring that in, but I brought in ornaments that were licensed or clothing items so that they would actually get a visual and then students could relate because sometimes depending upon what country you came from internationally, mm. you might not have experienced any of these things. Totally, Shelley. Did I tell you that for a longer time, at least for six months of my time in Canada, I thought Costco was a cake shop. 
<laughs> Did you really? Oh, they're good. Great. They've got great cakes. Because all my colleagues and friends back at, at Queen's University, they would always bring cakes from Costco. Sure. And I thought, oh, maybe it must be a great bakery. <laughs> and after six months, when I went uh, to the Costco with one of my friends, I said, oh, my God, they sell TV and fridge. So your story reminds me of my story also, that how things are very different when they're new to Canada. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that. So. Like while navigating these uh, stories, these surprises, what is one thing you learned over the time that that may work beautifully for our new faculty who are very new to teaching the national students? Oh, I always uh, encourage new faculty share their experiences. The the wealth of Conestoga College faculty is incredible. Whether or not you're full time or part time, we all have something to offer. So to bring in those experiences that you had into the classroom and whether or not that is through props or photos or pictures or sharing your experiences, uh, students then become much more engaged. Uh, I have a variety of tools that I use. Uh, I used actually dice the other day. So we were we were um, I know it was Vegas in my classroom the other night or the other day. Rather, Uh, we had to choose for when uh, your team was going to present their final projects. And that's always a sticky who's going to pick first. And you always want to be fair. So all the teams got a dice and whether it was a one die and they got to roll it. And then the whole class got involved. It was like we were around a uh, like a blackjack table and everybody mm-hmm. was cheering. I guess that's not the one. But it was it was kind of fun and exciting to kind of use those uh, uh, to- uh, toys, if you want to call it, to engage students. Yeah, those uh, props always are helpful. Uh, but then coming back to some challenges. Sure. I'm very sure that over your long career while teaching, you probably have, you know, encountered some challenges as well. So... Any challenges you remember particularly that was difficult for you? Sure. I think I think ongoing uh, to getting students to participate is a really big one. Okay. Uh, students uh, come from a variety of different cultures, so their English is good, but it might not be as well as uh, obviously a domestic student. So to get them to participate in a class is a little challenging. Uh, I often one of my icebreakers right off the bat is to have a student tell me something about them. That is not where they came from or what their degree is, but something about them. Are they a foodie? What music do they like? What's exciting to them? What are their passions? So that eventually I can incorporate that into the class. And by doing that right at the beginning of week one, you are actually building your community in your classroom. And then I can find that I can take those examples that students tell me and then overall build them to the next term, the next or the next class, the next class and say, hey, I remember you really like music. Let's talk about that and to kind of bring those in. But the other challenges is also you have to make it a safe environment for hmm. students to be able to participate. So I always establish that this is a safe haven. There's no one's going to tell you anything's wrong, except me, possibly if it's really bad. And everyone can speak up in this classroom, regardless of your your country, regardless of your sex. You're an equal person in my classroom. So that has helped people kind of come out of their shells and games. Students love games. It is shocking. And it's not for I'm not giving out anything, but it is whether or not it's Mentimeter or before we use Kahoot or even a matching game. It is shocking how many people love to participate. Yeah. And to be honest, the basic things, hand out a bunch of markers, dry erase markers to everybody and say, hey, I'm looking for when you when you're thinking of culture, put a word that describes culture, go up. And by the way, once you give that you once you have your marker, you can hand it off to somebody else. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden they're trying to get their buddies up there as well. So, yeah. So that's kind of fun to to do those kinds of things. Yeah, building community is very important while teaching international students because they, they, they don't have it here. You talked about having a safe space, right. and I think it's so important. And sometimes if somebody is very new to teaching, it might look like an abstract idea. Shelley, would you like to give us one more example um, how faculty can create safe space for these international students? So I think you start off uh, initially very slowly. You set you set the tone in your classroom. And once you have, for me, that icebreaker of walking around and talking to each and every person, and sometimes classes do get a little rowdy. There's there's a higher component part of male students in my classrooms than mm-hmm. females. So sometimes those voices carry. And so I always will stop the class and say, hey, everybody gets to participate. Let's all listen to everybody. And then uh, you have that conversation. 
And then I find uh, in my slide decks for each lessons, I have videos. And those videos sometimes are, what are the coffees of the world? Or what are, which ones would you like to try? So I encourage, hey, when you're watching this video of all the different coffees in the world, pick which one you'd really like to try and which one you'd never want to try. Inevitably, everybody wants to try the Irish whiskey one with, of course, has whiskey in it, which is really quite amazing. I can nail it. And no one ever wants to try the one with eggs in it because I think they recall total recall and orange Schwarzenegger bringing back and eating raw eggs in breakfast. But but I have everyone participate. So those small gains at the beginning of your classes when you're in week one and two and three, that consistent behavior all the way through. Uh, name cards work incredibly mm. well so that you can reach out to the individuals. Sometimes I've used um, uh, cards and have put questions on them, handed them to students so they can ask me a question halfway through. And then they feel empowered. I feel empowered. Everybody feels empowered so they can all ask questions. So Yeah, definitely. How about a name card? Uh, recently, someone told me that Sometimes they may not, they don't feel comfortable of calling people with their name because they, they're afraid of, they might say it in a wrong way. So what is your tip about that? Oh, I'm horrible at presentation or pronunciation. Absolutely. Uh, I always ask students to tell me what their name is okay. and how would you like it to be pronounced? And then they always shorten it, right? So they all, I said, well, you can just, no, tell me, I'll be happy. So I look at their name card. I definitely, if you are a new faculty or a faculty, I would encourage you to keep the name cards. Do not give them to the students. Have a file folder, whatever section you have and take them because they will not bring those name cards back. They will forget them, lose them, what have you. So I always keep them with me. They're in my bag. Uh, as soon as I walk into the classroom 10 minutes before, I put them on the desk. I encourage everybody to use them. And then um, what I've been doing the last two years, and I don't know if it's been helping or not, but I think after that lovely thing that we don't talk about two years ago, is we need to have some joy yeah. and we need to talk about the positive things in the world. So I share something positive about what happened with me during the week or the weekend. It could be I baked or I, I love to do crafts or, or I slept in, whatever. And then I encourage students to tell me something just one or two volunteers to tell mm -hmm. me something would happen to them. And it could be anything. They found the right bus. They didn't get lost. Uh, they saw a good movie. They found the great spices, w whatever. It could be, let's celebrate the little stuff. And everybody is willing to share each and every week. So it's really difficult week one and two. But then by week three, people are sharing, hey, I went to this, uh, I went to this event. I played guitar. I met this person. One, one student was so happy they got on the right bus. Okay. So it's just, it's little things. And I think sometimes as faculty, we just got to get back to the basics. I think you have made a very important point about having student voices in the classroom because they, all they want, they want to be heard uh, by the faculty. That's very important. Um, one of the questions I'm going to ask you uh -huh. is that because you have shared so many wonderful tips, you know, simultaneously even before I asked you, <laughs> but then I'm going to ask this question anyway. Sure. If somebody is new to teaching or they are not very sure about teaching international student, what is a couple of advice you're going to offer to them? Oh, my advice would be um, one to, to speak to your program coordinator mm -hmm. or to whoever is in the program, because there is so many availability of options, of uh, criteria. We've got incredibly through teaching and learning, incredible courses to help. But one of the big things to really kind of influence is just be yourself. Okay. Reach out to the students, uh, have calm, and reach out constantly to the students and say, did everybody understand that? Are we getting that? And there's nothing wrong with when we talk about pre-assessments and post-assessments, and I know that's very clinical, but they are important mm -hmm. to have those games at the beginning class or have them, I have them the next week and say, okay, we're going to play. Let's re let's review what we talked about last week, because that's the basis of this week. Right. So we always have those little games and people get involved and and you show up the leaderboard and those types of things. And it is important to um, obviously to read through your material, to get a handle on that and try to relate it to the students. Ask them for their inputs. Is this the same in Nigeria? Is this the same in India? Yeah. Is this the same in the Philippines, in Brazil, in Colombia? Hey, do you have that here? Tell me about it. And they will, they love to share their culture. Yes. And it, once you break that, 
everybody is sharing their culture and to give their experiences. Yeah, all students love to share their ideas, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I have learned more about different countries, cultures, backgrounds from my students. Uh, they bring so many stories to the classroom. I will ask you one question because um, I would like you to think about what is one thing you have learned from your career while teaching international students? Maybe something you did not do before. But now you know, oh, this is some, something I, I should have done or maybe I should do, continue doing that. What I think I really would do or would have learned to do in the past is really to get that participation from students to not um, worry that they're not going to feel. Um, sometimes when you reach out to students, they really don't want to talk to you. Yes. And they, and they, they shrivel up. And you're like, no, come on, talk to me. And you have this conversation. And then sometimes I would prep students ahead of time saying, hey, I might have to ask you a question today. Are you okay? And they're sure, ask me a question. So I think I would have done that a little bit more often because that is, is you can get student participation. Your classroom is just much more inviting. It begins mm. a community and the lessons just go really much, much faster. Yeah, definitely. We are almost at the end of our conversation. So I, because you talked about, you know, joy of sharing the joy of life, right? With the student. So I would like to bring you back to the story of joy of teaching international student. So looking back you to your teaching, what is one story that probably you would like to share with us uh, that, you know, that, that, that is a moment that you felt rewarded that we had, that is a great job I'm doing. Uh, maybe a rewarding moment. Um, that you have realized after teaching a batch or a cohort? Uh, you know, I don't think there's one specific because I think there are all these little micro, micro joys that you actually have as a teacher. It doesn't always happen just at the end. It, for sure, when they come across that stage at graduation and they're shaking <laughs> their hand and they're grabbing you and they're hugging you, uh, those are great, great times. When they want to take your photo and send it back to their moms and their, their family back uh, in their countries, uh, those are always uh, entertaining for me. Uh, but when they come back and when they get a job or mm. because they do want to, many students do want to work in Canada. Yeah. So to see the joy that they have succeeded in building that skill set and you were a part of that, that's a, a really great thing. Or to say, um, I do get comments that I've never really seen a female professor like this mm -hmm. uh, from both females as well as males or uh, to call, uh, I like to be called Shelly or professor. Ma'am is just not really high on my radar. Uh, that's far too old. I identify as young. Yeah. So I want to be that. So uh, they see that and they can see that they often will reach out to me, have conversations with me. What do you think about this? How do you think about this? So it's really for me, it's those joys that they can succeed, get their skill set and for me to help them reach their goals. Mm. So thank you so much for this wonderful session. And any last word from you, if you would like to add something? Last words, I would just say that if you are in the teaching profession or teaching international students to just embrace the knowledge that you're going to get because they're going to give just as much to you as you're going to give to them and reach out to them because it's going to be an incredible journey. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Nazreen. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. I hope you continue sharing your joys, stories and experiences about teaching international students. And we are signing off. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.